Sam, it's going to be very nice to see you. How are you, first of all? Where in the world are you? What's keeping you busy today? Um, very well, thanks. Uh, in Exeter, we just finished our training day here, so um, freezing cold temperatures, boys helping get the uh, covers off the pitches. But yeah, pretty well, thank you, mate. Have you got? Are you surrounded by snow? Have you got? Are you building snowmen and sledging, or are you? Not well, that? actually, we we've got no snow whatsoever. Um, it's just been sort of rock hard grounds and that sort of thing, really. But we're relatively fortunate; we don't have much, to be honest. Good on you. How is the club? How are the Chiefs? Who's, we're good. who's, lead, who's uh, leading the charge at the moment? Yeah, it's going well. We had a sticky patch a few weeks back, um, a few COVID incidences, and then a couple of losses, which was, um, you know, interesting. But I guess we're, I'd say we're back on the horse now and have had two uh, tough, tough wins, to be honest, um, ground them out a little bit. But I guess we're slowly getting back to, to our ways now, I'd say. I'm fascinated to know, and I genuinely was thinking about this a couple of times, how you've worked your way out of that sticky patch, because everybody in the game knows how much Rob Baxter loves the power of a good beer. Was it, was it an ale-led recovery, or was it very analytical and, um, you know, sort of introspective, I suppose, as to how you solved a couple of the problems? No, I mean, we are, as most, I'm sure people know, we're a very social team. We, we like to I pour a lot of emotion into games and we get that through having socials and going and having beers together and, and doing that and because of these times it makes it very hard to commit that emotion to the game just because you don't get the contact time you, you normally get um, but I think what you could describe our situation as was a delayed hangover um, it was probably a good thing that the season started so quickly for us because we rolled straight into it and we were in still in good form um, then a couple of very strong sides came with a very good game plan and a lot of emotional energy and they put in two very good performances against us and caught us a little bit cold to be honest and we just had if I'm honest we just had really honest conversations um, we aired all the day laundry which there wasn't much of it was just this is where we are let's sort of wipe the I guess the slate clean as it were for want of a better phrase and, and crack on and we've sort of had the last two games as our imaginary start of the season again really and they've been fairly scratchy performances but it's very typical of our start of the season games really so it's it's something to build on now. I don't think it's in any way surprising that a little dip comes. Um, are you are you all kind of enjoying it though? I'm, I'm, I'm curious as to because it's, it's not uncharted territory for you but it's definitely you know off the back of the season you had last time out where it's just gold after gold after gold. I just wonder how when the pressure comes back on again are you all still very calm? Is it when you talk about emotional energy? Are there one or two who sort of give more perhaps than they have done? No, I mean we're having a great time. I mean, given the current climate and the grand scheme of things, we all appreciate where we are right now and how lucky we are to be doing what we're doing. Um, you know, we get to go and train every day with, with what are your best mates really and have a great time doing it. So, in terms of pouring emotional energy into the games and, and putting pressure on ourselves, we're well aware that the end of the season is well, it feels like an eternity away at the minute. Um, and this is the, I don't know, it's the grinding stage of the season, isn't it? So we're not talking about cup finals or anything like that right now. We're just, we're just trying to collect points and win games of rugby. Um, and at the minute, that's just been through sort of old school hard graft. Um, and now we're just trying to add, as we go through the season, a touch of finesse and, I don't know, some enjoy some good looking rugby, hopefully. Yeah. Um, I, it's interesting you mentioned how quickly last season rolled into this season I just wonder whether I don't even know whether you've really stopped to, I hope you stopped to celebrate was there a proper you know it's not easy at the moment because of everything that's going on but was there a proper knees up mother brown and rob on the piano and you know <laughs> Jack Noel on, on on vocals I mean did you get a proper celebration away we got we got a proper celebration but I mean a proper celebration would would have would have been I guess a enjoying it with with Exeter as a whole and doing a bus yeah. parade and doing it that way and we didn't get any of that so that was a shame but we, we were able to enjoy it internally and, and we we got what we could out of it I mean you can do a social or whatever you want but you, you know at the end of the night it's not leading to a nightclub or anything like that so uh, it has its drawbacks and um, there we go we, we enjoyed what we could out of it and I mean at that point I think it was going to Autumn International so we had a lot of boys going off to I think some boys are going off to England and Scotland camp literally the next day well I think I was yeah well I was I did go to Scotland camp the next day so it was you know such it was a little it was hard to fully fully enjoy it um so that's why we kind of want to do it again so we can really really properly <laughs> enjoy it this time do you know what I mean it's a bit annoying. 
I love mo the motivating factors down at Sandy Park. It's yeah. um, you know, there's there's obviously the silverware, but there's also the celebration. I just wonder, having done the double, and there ain't many clubs that can say that, whether you feel now that sort of hunter turned hunted. Is there a sort of does Rob talk in those terms as in terms of the mindset of now you're the ones that are being chased as opposed to doing the chasing? Uh, not really. It's sort of it's everyone's to win again, isn't it, this year? So we haven't really spoken about that. You can definitely feel in say when we played Wasps uh, and Bristol, you can definitely see the emotional energy they poured into that. And you can understand that, okay, these when you have these big games, this is what it's going to be like now. Um, mm. And we have had, well, we had one European game against Glasgow, um, but the next one was called off. So we haven't really had a feel for Europe in terms of how that feels yet properly. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't say we're necessarily, I don't know. We don't feel like we've 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 done it. It's in the past now. You know, we're trying to we're trying to win it again rather than try and hold on to the trophies. We're trying to trying to chase them again. I think that's our mindset more than anything. Um, talking about being uh, sort of been and done. Um, Saturday's Calcutta Cup. Yeah. How how have you, how have you played those cards over the <laughs> yeah. course of the last few yeah. days? Um, I'm I'm over the moon that the boys won, obviously, um, but. I'm only human. I'm gutted that I wasn't part of it naturally. So yeah. uh, bittersweet for me. I was buzzing for the boys, sent a few of them a message after. Um, I'm, I'm, they, I'm sure they got to celebrate in style as you should, because I guess you, you saw the emotion they poured into, into that game and it was a good quality performance. So I was just really happy for all the guys because I know what that will mean for them in the camp and I want to be there obviously, but especially now we've got boys at Exeter like Hoggy and, and Johnny Gray to see them play as well as they did as well is uh it's awesome actually and yeah just really happy for them really how are you received within the exeter squad off the back of scotland winning um do you, do you get your clothes burnt and your car turned over or is everyone really, just sort not of not really no? not really it's a strange one when you when you i've got to be careful what i say here when you grow up as a kid you grow up and you you support your your, your country sort of thing and you're desperate for them to win but when you get to the professional level you get to the top you you have an you have an appreciate you play with each other so many times even players play Scotland players in the Prem or whatever and you just have a, an appreciation for each other more I guess so a lot of the Chiefs boys were just like yeah fair play Scotland played well you know happy that's just the way it is rather than you know burning that Scotland won um, yeah I guess everyone just has that understanding so yeah boys were like yeah fair play skins that's like that's, that's awesome and I was like yeah yeah happy days um, but then obviously they knew that naturally I I wanted to be up there with, with those guys. Yeah, where where are you at with it all? What 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 is the story with with you in Scotland at the moment? Is there is there a is there clear sort of things to do? Is there a an open dialogue? What, what's the kind yeah, of I've story? Got, I've got a fairly open relationship with Gregor um, and JD, the, the forwards coach there, and I was basically told that I wasn't in the twenty three for England, um, and because of the COVID situation, they didn't want to bring me up um, and put any of I uh, guess that situation at risk as having to come up and down and play for extra on the weekend. Mm. Um, having said that, I obviously wanted to be in that starting 23. So there's things in my game that I've got to improve to get there. Um, and I, I think they're happy with me set piece wise. I think they probably just want to see, I guess, want to see me offer more around the park. So that's what I'm, I've been doing in the last couple of weeks. And I've actually been quite enjoyed it, to be honest. It's been quite refreshing just to, I guess just play rugby and just look look to try and get your hands on the ball and then look to make some shots and D, you know, rather than manage your way through a game, just get excited about playing rugby again as you would as you would when you're younger, just trying to score tries every time you get the ball. So I remember hearing, which is really interesting to hear. I remember um, not that long ago, Rob Baxter, I think it was on BT Sports, saying that there was a real sense within the Exeter squad of wanting to play and help propel. I think they were talking with regards to Joe and Sam Simmons yeah. in that England squad. There's a sense amongst the squad that, that Joe and Sam should be with England. And I just wonder, therefore, when you get feedback, which is, you know, get around the paddock and, and you know, skip about a bit more, can you give that to Rob and say, look, this is what I'm getting from Scotland. I'm going to... How do you manage what Scotland want from you with what Exeter want from you? I think I'm quite lucky. I think the Scotland and Exeter have a really good relationship. And yeah. I can tell the coaches what I, what I need to do from Scotland's perspective and vice versa. And they play a similar style, similar brand of rugby. Um, so when I told the coaches at Chiefs, they said, great, well, we, that's, that's what we want to work on as well. And, and let's get stuck into it. So it was all very positive, really. It was, right, we know, we know what we've got and let's, let's go and get it. So, mm. yeah, in regards to that, it's, um, yeah, there's no issues really at all. Um, 
I think England potentially is a little bit more challenging for some of the guys just because um, there's some differences in the, in the two styles of play. Um, and so it's probably hard for them to have to make that transition um, from playing for Exeter to playing for England because it's a very quick thing. You've got one week you might play for England, the next you play for Chiefs and you've got to quickly snap into gear in terms of how they want you to play. Um, yeah. Yeah, I feel for Scotland it's very similar, so we're pretty lucky really. Is that the, the, the reference point I made though about Rob sort of talking about that strength of squad? Is that something that's very palpable, palpable to you as a player? I mean, do you do you see that in that day to day? Hundred percent. If if for whatever reason, no one sits down and goes, "Oh, you know, how are you not in the England squad, Joe?" Or da, da, da. You know, obviously we want them to be in the England squad, and we're not. No one's bitter about it. Hmm. You know, it's, it's a, a, one man's opinion at the end of the day, and <laughs> that's all that matters. And we know that. But equally, when we were playing big games, you know, you definitely have a feel playing for extra Chiefs that you want to work extra hard for. Joe Simmons or Sam Simmons to make him look as good as possible to give him the best opportunity. Um, I don't know, it might be something as simple as Sam Simmons is opposite numbers running at you and you're thinking, right, I've got to make sure he doesn't have his moment here so Sam can have his moment, that sort of thing. Um, and there's definitely there's definitely some form of kinship there across our squad, um, which, which is which is nice because it's more, I guess it's more old school, it's sort of, that's why you play, you know, it's play for, the, for your mates rather than it's a professional era now, isn't it? If you, yeah. want, if you want to be honest about it, you know, you can play for the money, but we try and keep as much as we can playing playing for each other. And without going on too much, Rob's pretty good like that. He says, look, this is just a stadium. It's bricks and mortar, really. Um, you are playing for the badge. I'm sure he knows that. But equally, it's a professional era. All he cares about is that season that you're signed of extra chiefs. You're playing for your mates around you. And that's it's, it's a pretty... Uh, I'm sure a lot of clubs are similar to that. I'm not saying extra or above and beyond anyone else. I'm sure a lot are similar, but that's certainly the way we look at it. And uh, yeah, it's, it's quite an honest and I guess refreshing and enjoyable way to play, to be honest. It does shine through. I mean, it really does shine through. I mean, you, and you hear, you hear the players talk about it. You can see it in the way that you guys play, etc. Can I ask you about Exeter bus trips, particularly back from a, um, let's yeah. say, a win? Yeah. And let's say from the Newcastle. Midlands. So it's not a Newcastle one where you might be spending most of the weekend on a bus. It's a it's yeah. a good six hour chunk. I mean, is that, dare I ask, is that almost the highlight of the week? Yeah, massively. Um, we've got some games that happen on the way up um, on the Friday before a Saturday game saying it's always good fun. Um, so the, then... bus, the bus up, I imagine, is calm, quiet, Bit of um, you know nutrition food. I can't imagine you're naked at the back with the oh, um, oh, yeah, there's no, yeah. There's no alcohol or anything, but there's some there's some fun quizzes and some good team names and it's good fun. Um yeah, but we're now on two buses because of the COVID rules. So oh, you have to I know, so there are these are the challenges and you have to sort of try and relay the team names across two buses and get the quiz across two buses and um yeah, so the way up's relatively calm but still good fun. Who um, who is Quizmaster? Uh, so Harry Williams is the guy who, oh, is he? Oh, when, and when he's away, it's Alec Hepburn. Um, ah. and they've done some pretty good quizzes, to be fair to them. Um, yeah. It's more on the fun side rather than the, you know, how, how smart are you? The, the, whole, the whole point in the quiz is how trying to make it fun and funny. But, and who, who, who is the, who's, who's top of the class at, at Curious Quizzes? Um, that's a good question. We've lost some boys now, you know. Oh, Ian Whitten right now is probably top yeah. of the class. He's got he's got a good all round knowledge. Um, but obviously we've lost Dave Dennis. He was pretty pretty switched on. Um, Jack Yandel was good. Um, but I only really yeah I only really, really know the guys I'm in and around the team name, teams with. To be honest, I'm, I couldn't really comment on a lot of those boys. Um, what about what about the um, bus journeys on the way back? Yeah, bus journeys on the way back are obviously a lot of fun. Um, they've had to be tempered down a bit since COVID, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, we normally, we have a kitty, money goes in and uh, we just, just share some drinks and just let it flow really and, and whatever happens, happens. Uh, <laughs> we can't reveal too much information. Quite right um, too. Certainly not on this shambles uh, of the show. Is it, it, is, are the rumours about Rob true though, that he, he, he is not sitting quietly at the front of the bus with the newspaper? He likes to make sure that one in or all in. I think um, that was definitely the case back in the day. Um, he's retired is he I think now as the game has become more professional um, and I guess as the Chiefs have grown as a club um, he's very much he's nowadays he's very much down the front um, 
sort of doing the coding after the game and stuff. But oh, no. certainly... that's, that's the, that is destroying the dream. No, but there have certainly been times. Um, <clears throat> there, may be, there may be one game a year, um, which I guess you can imagine which, it, what, which one it is, that it's all, all coaches, all players, all, all is one, which is, which is good. Fun. <laughs> that's, a pretty, that's, a pretty, that's a pretty special bus fit, that one. I bet. And it's important, you know, that's, I imagine, why you guys do it. Um, I, I, I don't want to, but I'm going to ask you about injuries. Um, are you, are you, I mean, you've, you've, had, you've had more than your fair share and you've had some, some brutal points in your career as well, particularly pre-World Cup. Is that, is that something you're at peace with or is that something that burns, motivates you and you wrestle with a bit? No, I'm, I'm at peace with it. I, I don't look too much into it. I think look, things happen and they just, they, I don't think things happen for a reason. I just think they, ha- they happen and you just got to get on with it, you know? Um, it was gutting to, to not be able to go to the World Cup, obviously, but it happened and then I just had to get on with it and, and get through my rehab. Um, to this day, I still have issues with my hamstring, not issues, but I have to prepare a certain way to make sure I'm fired up and ready to go. Um, what does that involve? I mean, is that is that particular stretching or? Uh, yeah, stretching and and activation really, just firing up the muscles. They might just take a bit longer to fire up because um, it was a fairly heavy sort of surgery operation sort of thing. And and yeah, that's just the way it is. It's just professional rugby has its toll on the body, I guess. Um, I don't think there's one player that doesn't do something before they train on a particular area of the body that needs a bit of extra work. So, but yeah, when I first came back after that injury, I was just focused on playing games and staying fit and that's all my focus was and I'm not putting too much pressure on myself and now I've sort of got through that stage it's just about trying to keep improving and keep getting better but look I'm not too fussed injuries injuries are shit they're crap they're so shit and they can be tough mentally but you know you're, you're not more special than anyone else and it's just part of the game you just got to crack on I think. Mm. Um, how, do you feel all right now that you, you're not carrying too much in terms of aches and pains and no, grumbles? I mean, touch wood I feel really good um it's good so feeling feel, yeah feeling good to go as well what about away from the paddock and away from the game and away from you know the laptop i suppose what, what keeps you busy what, what floats your boat uh so i guess during lockdown once things calmed down a little bit a few, a few of us went down and i basically learned to surf during the summer which did good. you yeah which where about did you go we went north devon so Beaches like Puttsburgh or Croy would be quite a famous one that I'm sure people know. Yeah. Um, and then Saunton Sands. And we have a good few group of us, which is it's a lot of fun, actually. Um, Who's then, in Surf Club? Surf Club, you've got Tom O'Flaherty. Um, mm. You've got Jack Mondo, who's a very good surfer. Yeah. Um, we signed a player called Jack Walsh. He's played a couple of games this year. And he's a phenomenal surfer. He surfed in Hawaii and he makes us look like absolute amateurs. Um, right. He's honestly like... You think you know about surfing and you know nothing when you see Walsh. So, and yeah. then you've got Ricky, Ricky Pello, um, coach who's he loves to surf. And then you've got a few physios, um, a guy we call Frodo Tommy. He's uh, he's a good surfer as well. So, there's a there's a good mix of us. I've probably missed some boys off there as well. You know, you know that Sam Hill used to surf a lot, but he's obviously now gone to sail. Um, yeah, so there was a good group of us and it was a lot of fun. Um, but since then, I've just bought a piano. <laughs> just tried. Practice. Wow! Oh, I love it. Uh, well, so what, Alec, what, 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 what are you tinkering? Alec Hepburn just bought a piano recently, and I was like, "Sod it! I'm going to buy one as well." Um, Facebook Marketplace is a wonderful, wonderful spot. <laughs> 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 just gave it a go, and um, a very budget song uh, so far, but it's going all right. It's good fun. I'm, I'm trying to play Tom O'Dell's "Grow Old with Me." Oh, yeah. so it's very good on the I do exactly the same thing you put it on um, the iPad and yeah, I can't yeah. read music but it just teaches you which keys to play in what order yeah it's a bit like Guitar Hero it's quite good exactly there you go the whole play it's my, my, my downtime um, <laughs> that's good so, so I mean can we getting the Alexa to band together uh, I don't know I don't know um, so you've got some you've got James Short who's he's the he's the musician at the club he can sing play guitar he's very good but there's a few of us that just try a couple of things. It's a bit of a laugh, really. It complements rugby quite well because yeah. you can't run around shouting the whole time. So no. The only thing is, I imagine. I, mean, I, I don't know what your fingers are like, but most of the people <laughs> who play for 15 years end up not being able to put the right ki- right fingers yeah. on the right keys. Yeah, I know. I'm, at the minute I'm all right, but I'm yeah. Touch wood, it won't get any worse than it is. We'll see. Yeah. And and what I mean, have you are you interested in sort of studying things? I'm sort of wondering. Uh, lots of players end up doing 
degrees and courses and things is that does that float your boat or, or not too much yeah I, I got a degree from exeter so i went to uni uh oh, well done what did you do i did business economics um nice. so yeah i went to Exeter university for three years i was sort of part-time with exeter um so my fresh year i did england 20s and then second and third year um it was back when the there was no lb cup that year because the world cup or something i can't remember but it was a few years ago so I did that and then since then i've jumped into a, a cider situation with Sanford Orchards and a few of us have created a cider called Rib Tickler, oh, uh, yeah. which has been, which has been a lot of fun, actually. Uh, we've done it all for charity. This was about a year and a half ago. We started this, maybe two now. Um, yeah. And it's gone really well. Um, a lot of the Where can you buy Rib Tickler? So you can buy it online on Sanford Orchards website, or you can buy it in most local pubs in Devon. So we send it out to wholesalers and they, um, and they, they spread it around the pub. So it's in pubs that I don't even realize. Um, so it's in all the farm shops around it, around Devon and Exeter, and then, um, yeah, and then it's around. So, so like Saint Austell Brewery will will, will yeah. release it for us and send it off to other pubs. So I couldn't tell you, couldn't tell you every pub. That's brilliant. Um, probably are you quite pubs. are you quite interested though in? Do you get into spreadsheets and do you get into you know marketing channels and things like that, or do you just yeah, say tastes so taste good, got, get it out there? I've got hold of the Instagram page, um, and then there's a guy called Barney Butterfield. He's a hilarious character. He's here in Sanford Orchards and um seven of us uh all worked to help sort of produce this side and really come together and collaborate and um we like did all the tasting we like designed the taste um signed the label with the marketing with the marketing team and we basically did the whole process and we did it the rpa helped set up with us and we did it all at first for experience and then it it i'm not going to say it took off it, well, it kind of did, it went down really well in the southwest as you'd imagine and um, it's gone really well. And so now it's just sort of sustaining itself on its own. Um, we've had a lot of boys that have now left. So we've got boy, James Freeman's now working in London. He's left Chiefs. Pete Laverick's now in Hong Kong. Johnny Hill, obviously he's, he's now playing rugby, rugby for England. So we have a lot of boys that are, have left the club. Phil Dolman was part of it as well. And he's now left the club. So, um, so it's hard to keep everyone together and keep it going. Um, but yeah, it's certainly gone well and it's been an exciting project. I love the salad. I imagine the ATM is quite good fun when you all get back together. Or ball yeah, 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 yeah. Um, what's the charity you're raising? Do you say you're doing it for charity? Yeah, so we, we work for two charities at the minute. Um, the Wooden Spoon, which I'm sure you're familiar oh, with. Brilliant. Yeah, and, then, great um, and then also the Exeter Foundation, just because, uh, well, the Exeter Foundation is obviously the, the Chiefs charity and it works with all charities around, around Sandy Park. Um, but it also help sweeten the deal with Tony Rowe if you need to use Sandy Park. So. <laughs> <laughs> Very clever. That speaks yeah. the true business one. I shall look out for rib tickler. I'll have it over the Rattler next time I'm down yeah, in that part do, of the world. Please do. That sounds amazing. Um, you, you've got a lot more shots to play in terms of your career stuff, but do you, do you think about next chapters and things like that? I mean, do you want, do you want to get in the booze trade? Do you want to, I don't know, play the Royal Albert Hall and the piano? <laughs> yeah, coaching? You know, what, 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 what kind of interests you but down the line or is that for another day I, th I think at the minute it's for another day i think i left uni <clears> and then just want to fully commit to rugby and then i'm trying to pick up things as i go along so this particular thing um trying to meet people just build a bit of a portfolio i suppose make contacts and yeah. find out what i'm interested in um so that's the plan as it stands um but you, you're right like you just never know when the career ends so you need to be prepared and We'll see. But it, it, it's so good to hear. And, and the more we do these, the more the more it seems actually that guys of your age and your stage are rolling up your sleeves and are more conscious than, than perhaps five, ten years ago that yeah. it can end tomorrow. Is that something you notice amongst your peer group that players are, are, are making sure that it doesn't just end tomorrow and then it's like, what next? Yeah, I think so. I think boys are obviously there's well since COVID's happened, maybe not, but there's, there's a bit more money in the game as it grows. And I think people are, are smart with their money as well. I think that's a big thing. It's not really something you get taught at school and you get thrown in um, as a young professional. And I think people are well balanced with that, which is good. Um, and people speak, you know, players speak to each other about trying to help each other out and get into certain things. So um, yeah, I definitely think the RPA have pushed it really well. I think it's something that's spoken about a lot at the club. Um, since COVID has happened, things have changed because you can't do what you could have done. You know, you can't do these work experiences, you can't do that or the other. So that's made it more challenging. But certainly before then, there was definitely an emphasis of, you know, you should, you should, not, you, know, you shouldn't be doing it. You know, you should only do what you want to do. But it'd be a good idea to be trying to have something ticking over in the background whilst you can. And I think most people have that mindset now, which is 
which is obviously a healthy one. And it can, it can help you rugby at the end of the day. Yeah. It's always good to have that balance, otherwise you can just become too rugby food. So. Yeah, good on you. Really good to hear and very, very nice to chat. And, you know, I hope you, you as I say, let, let's leave tomorrow for tomorrow because you, you've got some really exciting um, opportunities in front of you in your boots. Um, and I hope you're, you're back doing what you do, obviously for Exeter, but also for Scotland sooner rather than later. Yeah, what, um, what's on the to-do list the next day, two days? Have you got any, little, any, any exciting honestly, in the diary? Honestly, we, had a, we played Sunday in Newcastle and we've got Irish on Saturday, so it's, it's absolute soddle. Um, <laughs> Like, the glory uh, of being a professional yeah. rugby player. <laughs> uh, most, I think most of the boys are sleeping right now because they're a bit knackered. So um, it'll right. be sleep, rest, and um, well, what can you do? Go for a walk, maybe something like that. Oh, go, go and practice your C minor scale or whatever. Yeah. Do, do you do you live with other players now? I live with uh, one academy prop called Danny Southworth. Um, Got you. So it's who's it, who's in bed? There speaks the prop. He's in bed right now. <laughs> right. Good. Uh, Something yeah. about the, those up front. I don't know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, Sam, lovely to chat. Thank you very much indeed. Do keep. I mean, we'd love to keep in touch, and you know, if we yeah, can do cool. anything with your rib tickler, we'd love to help help shout about it. Etc. Um, Thank you very much. Go well. Lovely to chat. Look after yourself. Cheers, Alex. Catch you soon. Thanks, mate. All the best. 